first off, I mean, I don't have much to say about this uh, this current thing, although unless you maybe aren't aware of it. Um, it was announced yesterday uh, in the New York Times that current had been sold to Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera has a plan to basically take the real estate that current has uh, in terms of cable clearance and create a new network, maybe called Al Jazeera America. They'll use part of their Al Jazeera English uh, material and then create a, a new channel. It's unclear whether or not they're going to keep uh, the hosts at current or the staff there. Don't know. And uh, simultaneously, Time Warner Cable, which uh, current has about clearance in about 60 million homes across the country, much less than other uh, networks <clears throat> or other cable networks, Time Warner, which has about 12 million homes, basically said, we're not going to approve the sale and it's going to cancel our clearance contract. Now, some people are saying this is because Time Warner is, uh, you know, they're uh, racist in some fashion. I don't think that's what it is. I think current had so few viewers that they wanted to get out of this deal. And I'm not convinced that down the road they won't come back if Al Jazeera uh, America does well. But that, of course, is harder to do if you don't have access to a big swath of New York and uh, the 12 million customers that uh, Time Warner um, uh, services. Now, you know, uh, look, when Current fired Keith Olbermann, they had basically, the clock was then ticking. Uh, something like this was going to happen. They had to sell now because I think their, uh, their ratings were beneath the threshold which would have maintained their clearances, uh, their contracts with places like Time Warner or uh, uh, others. I don't know this for sure, but that's my suspicion. The uh, network is fairly profitable because it gets, I think, somewhere around a dime per subscriber uh, as part of their carriage deals, which... Um, is a pretty impressive amount for something that's not being watched that much. Uh, I, you know, as far as I can tell, Al Jazeera, at least Al Jazeera English, is um, extremely legitimate news. And I think arguably more so than any of our American cable outlets, or pretty darn close in a lot of respects. One of the things that really struck me. Now, that bar is not that high. Don't get me wrong here. But I found this piece of DW, I think it was, dot com. I'm not even sure what this is. But it was an interview with a longtime Berlin correspondent for Al Jazeera, a guy named Aktham Suleiman. Uh, he recently resigned from Al Jazeera. Um, and he described the reasons why. He, he says, I have to say that professionalism is now lacking in Al Jazeera. Now, this is, this is really telling because I want you to get a sense of what this guy's, this guy's standards are. He says they used to have it. They don't have it now. Um, it can be okay if an owner has an agenda as long as the operation has a high level of professionalism so that the owner's agenda does not bleed through. But he says, but that's precisely what didn't happen when efforts were obviously being made to impose out on Al Jazeera the agenda of the state of Qatar. It is owned by the state of uh, the nation of Qatar, Al Jazeera. And the, he's asked, uh, can you give an example of what you mean? And he says, the most important example is the conflict in Libya. Of course, Muammar Gaddafi was a dictator, and of course, he'd ruled for far too long. And of course, there was a desire among the Libyans to get rid of him. All that is clear. But it's also clear that killing a dictator, as happened with Gaddafi, is absolutely unacceptable on human rights grounds, revolution or no. And that's not emphasized. That is, we stressed the necessity of a revolution in Libya and the humanity of the revolutionaries, but said nothing about the murder of a dictator. And many others were killed after him, including, incidentally, the man who shot Gaddafi. He was killed by another group of revolutionaries. That's the actual environment in Libya, and that's exactly what you don't see on today's Al Jazeera. That's not professional. Can you, for one moment, imagine if this guy came and worked at an American news outlet, say, during the Iraq War, how shocked this guy would be at the level of total lack of professionalism. Never mind during the, the Libyan conflict. 
You know what? I specifically remember, I don't remember which news station, but a news station here in America, when Gaddafi was killed, I remember them going on and on about how there was a picture of the guy who shot Gaddafi and how awesome it was. He was wearing a New it, York Yankees hat. It, he was wearing a New York Yankees hat. It is, I mean, stunning. Just the fact, I mean, the fact that this guy would leave Al Jazeera because he doesn't feel that that level of professionalism is being kept is uh, the, you know, the... It would be like this. Imagine the guy gets up from the from a huge mattress, a 16-inch mattress, and says, I can't sleep there because there's the pee there underneath the mattress. And he gets onto the huge mattress that is the U.S. media. Uh, he would find that not only is there a pee, there is an entire mountain under there, and the mattress is on the precipice of the peak of that mountain, just bent like this, and the wind is blowing, and there's a massive storm coming through. Like, so just the fact that someone would leave Al Jazeera for, on that level of a standard, leads me to believe that Al Jazeera's standards are so much higher beyond what U.S. media standards are in this type of situation that it's almost impossible for us to comprehend. Uh, so, I, I don't know. I mean, I think it's a huge disservice to not allow... Uh, the American public access to this type of news because uh, clearly it's radical in the sense that they actually believe in a certain level of professionalism that I think we can't even conceive of in this country. So if if Fox mentions this story, it will be a correspondent for Al Jazeera resigns because they because he said they covered the Middle East unfairly. Yeah, That'll be exactly. The story. And, 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 you know, the other thing which should you know, mention is that I don't necessarily have a problem with a, um, a media outlet that's owned by a foreign government, okay? Because at least there's a certain amount of transparency there, and then you can judge the product on that basis. But, I mean, uh, when you talk about lack of transparency, I don't know that I would feel comfortable with a media outlet owned by the U.S. government at least domestically. Um, but when you talk about transparency, you know, NBC was owned by the number one arms dealer, one of the number one uh, top arms dealers in the world. Um, ABC owned by a huge media conglomerate that has a huge vested interest. Just got huge tax breaks in, um, uh, in this fiscal cliff deal. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, a lot of uh, conflict of interest when you're looking at the media, and as long as it's explicit, um, I don't I don't have an issue on that uh, on that level. So I I feel like you know the fact that Time Warner's not going to carry it I think is a, a disservice to Americans. <laughs>